Welcome to Lecture Online, and now for a final summary of the Big Bang. So, big, the Big Bang is a theory indeed, because we don't know all the final facts. There's a lot of things we don't have exact explanations or exact scientific reasons or explanations why things happened the way they did, or if they did indeed happen that way. But we have a lot of observational evidence that all seem to point to the same thing. So if we do a quick review of what the Big Bang must have been like. So the Big Bang was an event that happened about 13.8 billion years ago. 13.8 billion years, that's a long time ago. And it happened in an instant moment of a flash. Very quickly, over a very small fraction of a second, a whole bunch of events must have taken place. The four forces, the force of gravity, the, ele the, magnet the electromagnetic force, the nuclear strong force, the nuclear weak force, that must have been all together, must have separated over a very quick sequence in the very first second of the existence of the universe. We know that there must have been a tremendous inflationary period over a very minute period of a second, very small fraction of a second. The whole universe must have expanded extremely rapidly to much greater size than it was before the inflation started. That is the only thing that can explain the extreme uniformity of the background radiation, knowing that radiation has come to us from one direction for more than 13 billion years and from another direction the universe for almost for more than 13 billion years. And when it came to us from opposite ends of the universe, that has been in, in transit for 13 billion years, the uniformity of that radiation is beyond belief. Again, only explainable if the universe had very quickly expanded from a very small region. And just recently, experimental evidence has actually supported the concept of inflation, and we're fairly sure that something like that must have happened. We also know that in the very first fraction of a second to several seconds into the beginning of the universe, matter began to form from the very high energetic uh, uh, radiation that was there in the universe. First, the large particles, the hadrons, the baryons, that had large masses because it requires a lot of energy to make those particles. And as the universe cooled down, we realized that the temperature began to the point where the energy contained in radiation could no longer make the big particles, and the small particles were formed. And then when the, the universe continued to cool down, no more particles could be formed, and all the matter that exists in the universe would have then existed. Then we realized that when matter is created, it creates both particles and antiparticles, and typically in equal quantity. And so after the universe had cooled sufficiently, when they all reunited, they should have all annihilated each other, and no matter should have existed. But for some reason, a small excess of the particles Ex existed beyond the antiparticles, and so when they all annihilate each other, there would be a small amount left over. Roughly about one in a billion of these particles would have been left over after they recombined and annihilated each other. And so we really don't know how that happened. We call that burial genesis, the genesis of baryon particles, because there is no other explanation that we have. We're trying to find a theoretical explanation how that could have happened, and there's some ideas out there, but they haven't been proven yet. Then, after all the particles were created, including the very small lepton particles like electrons and, and um, neutrinos and so forth, then we went into a very rapid nucleosynthesis period. Over about 17 minutes after the start of the universe, the, from 3 minutes to 20 minutes, the entire universe acted like the core of a star and very quickly began to fuse hydrogen into helium at very rapid rates. And in those short 17 minutes, when it takes stars billions and billions of years to do the same thing, 25% of all hydrogen had been converted to helium. If that period had lasted a little bit longer and most of the hydrogen had converted to helium, we wouldn't have existed. The universe could not have existed the way it is today without having sufficient hydrogen to be fused into helium at the course of stable stars. After those 20 minutes, we were now into what we call the matter era. The temperature had dropped below 10 million Kelvin, where nucleosynthesis was no longer possible. But for the next 380,000 years, the radiation that we now see as the cosmic background radiation was locked into the matter because the matter was so hot that it was ionized and the electrons were separated from the protons so that radiation could not freely move around the universe and it was locked in just like the radiation is locked inside a star in the radiation zone of a star. Then, about 380,000 years after the beginning of the Big Bang, all of a sudden the universe cooled down, well, not 
all of a sudden, the universe finally cooled down to about 3,000 Kelvin. At that point, matter is no longer ionized, and electrons began to join with the protons, and therefore now there was plenty of space for the radiation to float freely through the universe, and the universe, from being a very opaque universe, became a transparent universe, and radiation was now set free, and it was now the radiation-dominant universe. There was still a period when stars began to form that there was so much radiation being generated by the stars that it began to re ionize the universe, but that was only for a very short period of time and not nearly to the extent that existed when the matter era was there. And then finally, we realized that the very slight differentiation in the density at the very early part of the universe then, then continued to display itself in the background radiation, and therefore the radiation now was able to freely move throughout the universe. Now, what happened after that was that for about 150 million years, the universe was completely black, completely dark, pitch black, not a single grain of light. Hmm, if you can say a grain of light or a single photon of light would be a better way to say it. A single photon of light because all we had was matter that was now no longer ionized. So we had electrons zipping around the protons making hydrogen atoms. And we had electrons zipping around the alpha particles making helium atoms and a small amount of maybe lithium and so forth and other elements. And radiation at a wavelength that was no longer visible light. It was now infrared light, which is no longer visible, so there was no visible light in the universe. Pitch black until the first stars began to put light into the universe, which probably didn't happen for the first 150 million years or so. But we did know that there were slight, uh, slight density fluctuations in the very beginning of the universe, which then expanded to small variations in the density of matter that was then created from the radiation in the radiation era. And those small regions where the density was slightly higher, that was along like surface regions or filament regions, wherever those crossed one another, density was high enough for the gravity to take over and start beginning to fuse things together. Well, I shouldn't use the word fuse, but at least push things together with gravity into dense enough regions where stars could begin to form and where galaxies could be begin to form. So we feel that somewhere between 150 and maybe 300 million years after the Big Bang, stars began to form, galaxies began to form, global clusters began to form, and that's where the universe began to take on the structure that it has today. The universe now is structured in such a way that it has these sheets of regions where galaxies exist with huge voids, voids between them where galaxies do not exist. And that is partly because of the way the energy density, density fluctuations existed at the very early stages of the universe. So what do we see today? Well, we see the cosmic background radiation. We kind of stumbled upon that by accident, even though some people were looking for it. And we now realize that it's the leftover radiation that permeated the universe at the very early stages of its existence. We also know the universe is extremely isotropic and homogeneous. Again, a result of the way the radiation permeated through the universe and how the inflationary period makes sure that the density was as equal as possible, as even as possible, everywhere throughout the universe. We also realize that the hydrogen to helium ratio was as a direct result in the theory of the Big Bang, knowing that there was a 17-minute period where the temperature and the conditions were just right for nucleo, uh, for nuclear fusion, and because of that, in a very short period of time, 25% of all hydrogen had fused into helium, and we see the results of that now because the makeup of the universe is about 25% helium and 75% hydrogen. The extreme uniformity of the CMB, the cosmic background radiation, is beyond belief. It is just so uniform. But again, if we go to the theory of, uh, uh, the, theory of the Big Bang and we see that at certain moments in the, in the universe existence, the temperature was just right where all the radiation would be set free at the same time throughout the universe, you can see how there would be that extreme uniformity from all over the universe. We also understood now what the Hubble constant is telling us, that we know that the universe is expanding at a very specific rate today, about 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec, and that causes the whole universe, space itself, to be expanding at a uniform rate everywhere throughout the universe, just like it had been doing at the very beginning of the universe. And also by understanding Wien's law to realize that the radiation and the wavelength of that radiation is simply a result of what the temperature was at those various stages. And we understand 
what kind of matter could have been produced at what stage of the, the Big Bang. And again, it falls right in line with the theories of physics that we understand and know and the laws of physics that we know. So all the observations coupled with this beautiful way in which we have been able to piece together the piece of the puzzle, we have a pretty good understanding of what the Big Bang was and how it happened. We still have to fill in a lot of details, but as time goes by and we discover more and more, the theory becomes more and more solid, and we have a better and better understanding how the universe got to be about 13.8 billion years ago.